What the f is this Finland? If you're planning to visit or even move to Finland, there will be a number of things that will make you go WTF. And in this video, I'm going to explain 10 of them to you. Let's go check it out. Hey, are you ready to go to sauna? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, time to get naked. Dude, you're completely naked. Yeah, of course I am. How so? What the f This will definitely catch you off guard because Finnish people are actually quite content of being naked. And as you probably might know, sauna culture and sauna is almost holy for Finns. And you either go naked or at least with sim swimwear if you go to a public sauna. If you're a little bit concerned about having your first sauna experiences, don't worry because sauna is nothing sexual, but it's meant for relaxing. Also, for example, if you go to the public swimming pools and in the dressing and the shower rooms, you will go there with so if you're a guy, you will go with other naked guys, or if you're a lady, you will go with other naked ladies in the sauna and shower rooms. This next one can be kind of crazy. This has happened to me as well. So when I was in the public swimming pool, I was taking the shower with other naked dude. This cleaning woman came to the shower rooms and she just started to clean like blah, blah, blah. And that's how it works. So, so they cannot really tell to the cleaning people if they can go to the guys or girls section to clean. So this can definitely happen. And there's nothing wrong with that, just keep your cool if that happens to you, but praise yourself. So Finland is one of the rare countries where it's actually possible to gamble in public places like grocery stores, supermarkets, gas stations and so on. Because we have like tons of these gambling machines available. And these machines are operated by the state-run Veikkaus organization. And if you're wondering, the money will actually go to a good cause. And Veikkaus has made this really nice breakdown where the money actually goes. So let me read it out to you. The places where the money goes to include social and health organizations, science, sports, culture and art, war veterans, youth and so on. The total money is around 1 billion euro. That's a lot of money. And as you can see, this is all gone to a good cause. But the interesting fact that all of this money comes from gambling. So people actually lose money and the lost money is put for good cause. Because the gambling is so, so much available, it has caused gambling addiction, addiction problems for people. And according to THL, which is kind of the health organization in Finland, they made a survey in 2019 and around 3% of Finns, that are, that's around 112,000 Finns, have a gambling problem. And from this group, around half have a gambling addiction. So that's around 52,000 euro. People usually, who usually play this are people who are not doing so well, at least according to what I've heard. And their money that they lose are put to good cause like youth and sports and science and blah blah blah. This is kind of like a reverse Robin Hood action. So Veikkaus organization has been actually under pressure quite a bit and for example starting yesterday, so today is 13th of January when I'm filming this video, 12th of January you need a strong authentication to play the games. I remember when I was younger the problem is that underage people were playing these because you have to be at least 18. So now they have made it so that you need an account which is created on the mobile app to be able to play. And I think it's a good, good change. How is gambling in your country? Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear. But depending where you come from, this might catch you off guard. Because Finland is a country where people operate heavily on debit and credit cards. People never use cash. I've even seen restaurant lines, like these lunch restaurant lines, when there's even one line that which doesn't accept other than cards. And I believe that's just to make things to go smoothly because when you have to do with the cash, you have to put the change and blah blah blah. Lots of hassle. As for me, I never use cash in Finland. But what is still advisable is to have some spare cash in your wallet, like 20 euros or something, because maybe the card system will fail sometime and then the cards won't work and then everyone's screwed. So it's good to have a little bit of cash in your pocket. For example, what is very awesome, in, if you go to a restaurant with your buddies, you buy what you buy and at the end, if you want to split the cost between everyone, you can just say like, okay, we play separately, split, everyone pays their own, and then 
the restaurant person brings four bills and you can each pay with your own card and you, you can even split payments with card and that's amazing because I've been in some countries like Japan where you have to put cash and they are like count like who, who paid what it's just a hassle but in Finland boom just put the card and everything's good hey I will be participating in the wife carrying world championships this year you're participating the what the wife carrying is a Finnish sports didn't you know that holy sh In Finland we actually have lots of bizarre sports and I've gathered a few of them into this video. And I also want to say that these sports you definitely don't see in everyday lives. I've never participated in these sports myself, at least not yet. But we have for example the wife carrying world championship where you carry your wife or I guess it's any woman and you have to complete this obstacle course, course as, fast as fast as you can. Then there's boot throwing world championships, you have to throw a boot as far as you can. There's lake floorball, where you play floorball on a lake, holy shit. There's swamp football world championships, you play football on the swamp, holy shit, that's gonna be some tough, tough spots. Air guitar world championships, wow, that's just amazing. And the <laughs> most interesting one is the naked 10 kilometer run. This is also organized annually. I would love to go to this one actually. Should I go? Let me know in the comments. Hey, I'm gonna get a few beers from the store. Do you want some? Dude, you cannot get them anymore. It's already past nine. What do you mean I can? And what do you mean by past nine? In Finland, you cannot buy alcohol after nine. You gotta be kidding me. Finland is definitely one of the countries where the alcohol behavior is somewhat well, you know. Yet at the same time, there's a number of restrictions in terms of booze and alcohol. One of them is that you cannot buy any alcohol products from grocery stores and supermarkets between 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. So if you're going to a home party in the evening, make sure to stock on some booze because if you go too late to the shopping market like after 9 to the grocery store to buy some longer, for example, they won't sell it to you. And there's nothing to do. I guess the cash, the point of sale system, the cash register systems are configured so that they won't let you kind of scan any booze products after nine. Uh. You can also see the alcohol sections being closed or locked completely, so you cannot even get them there. To add insult to injury, the Alco stores, which are the state-run liquor stores, which sell kind of the stronger shit, they are also open until 21 or 9 p.m. in the weekdays. And on Saturdays, they usually close, I think, around 6. So that's very early. So if you want to get like wine or some stronger like mint or korsen or whatever, you have to go early. You have to go early because you might be left out like, Haha, I miss my booze. <laughs> so make sure to get your booze in advance. Did you know that if you make just one phone call to the tax office, you can find out how much I make money? What? Really? Is that even legal? Of course it is. Well, tax info is public in Finland. Man, this country is so weird. Did you know that anyone can find out how much someone else who works and pays taxes in Finland makes money? That's right, because all the tax information in Finland is public. In practical terms, this means that, for example, I can call how much my neighbor, my best friend, my girlfriend, my boss, my peers at work, how much they make money. With one phone call, it takes literally two minutes. I have made a video about this where I actually did the phone call, you can check it out later. But it's pretty bizarre, but it's true. And each November, the tax office sends a list of people who had earned more than 100,000 euros to the media. And the media makes lots of articles who were the top sportsmen, who were the top YouTubers, who were the top earners all together. Some people refer to it, <laughs> call this tax poor. The media is making money when they get these clicks and make these articles. Now, you might be thinking like, what, why, why the hell is this system in place? Is there any pros? Well, there's actually lots of pros. First of all, it provides transparency. So we can see that no one is getting corrupt or there's no corruption. And you can actually see like, what is the price level? For example, if you start in a new job, you can find out how much your peers make money so that you are not underpaid or overpaid. And it also gives some good input for the political and societal conversations and discussions. But I guess one of the cons is definitely that it increases more jealousy because Finns are kind of jealous people already and people who make money, they just make more money and the people who don't make money, they're like, oh fuck, like, oh, why do we always have to read this article? Hey man, why there's so many Swedish around here in Helsinki? Because Swedish is still the second official language here in Finland. Really? Does it mean that you also have to start 
study Swedish in school? That's right. Holy shit, and I thought Finnish was hard, but now I have to learn Swedish too. Well, Finland used to belong to Sweden back in the days, and we can still see the effects up even today because Swedish is still the second official language in here in Finland. What is kind of in interesting that especially here in Helsinki, the areas of the city have also a Swedish name and also the bus stops have a Swedish name. And also the street signs or the streets have a Swedish name. So for example, Sörnäinen is Sörnäes. Tapiola is Hagalund, Lauttasaar is Drumsö, Keilaniemi Tjegelunden. Everything has a Swedish name here. There might be some case where this might mess you up. For example, I always use Google Maps when I'm looking at the public transportation routes. And sometimes my Google Maps shows me the Swedish names of the bus stops or the train stops. And that kind of confused me because like, ho hold on, what was the Finnish name again? Hey, it's my first day at the job tomorrow. Is there any pro tips I should know when working in Finland? Yeah, just take it easy. Finnish working culture is quite laid back. And remember that you don't have to address your boss with the last name or usually titles. Just use the first name, it'll be good. And I thought I've already seen everything. In Finnish working culture, we don't call each other like Mr. Laitinen or Mr. Pekkanen or whatever. We always use people's first name. It doesn't matter if it's a client or your boss or your superior or your peer or whatever. I personally work in B2B sales, so I meet clients almost on a daily basis and I always greet the clients with their first name. So it's very flat hierarchy and I think it's a really good thing because if we would have to call like Mr. And blah blah blah. It's just it would be really stiff and it wouldn't fit to the Finnish working environment at all. And again, if you plan to come to study in Finland, you, you meet your professor, your teachers, you can also call them with the first name. You don't have to say Mr. or Mrs. Just leave that out. How is it in your culture? Let me know. Thanks for not driving over me. This is a very funny thing. When you are crossing a crossroad, you know the zebra walkway with the white stripes on the ground, you're waiting there, you see a car coming, and if the car stops and lets you walk, lets you go you across, you might see people like doing like this, like, hey, thanks for letting me cross. But sometimes Finnish people shout like, hey, thanks for not driving over me. <laughs> this can be a little bit surprising. And I think it just tells like how respectful Finns are. When you're driving a car, they see a pedestrian, okay, yeah, sure, go ahead. Amazing. But I think the traffic culture in Finland is awesome. Like there's no road rages or like people don't really drive crazily and people actually obey the traffic rules. And that also brings another added layer of safety to finish uh, to life in Finland in my opinion. This abloy lock system is pretty dominant in Finland, so most of the regular doors have an abloy lock system. You have to be careful, if you don't know how, it, how to use it, you might lock yourself out. So let me teach you how it works. So you see this knob, when you push it up and close the door, the door will lock and you cannot open the door outside unless you have the key. If you put the knob down, the door won't lock and you can just pull down the handle to open the door. Essentially this means that you don't need your key to lock the door. So if you leave your place, make always sure you have your keys with you before you close the door because if you don't you will lock yourself out if the knob is up. So that can definitely cause some problems and calling the company to open the door can be quite expensive after 50 euros so make sure to make sure to use no make sure to, oh fuck this doesn't work. And if you want to understand the Finnish people and the culture better, learning the language is the key and you can get my free quick start guide for Finnish language by joining my email list. Links in the description. Make sure to subscribe to get more videos as well. See you next time. Moi moi.